At Brown Brothers we have tradition, but we are not the traditional wine company. In the 1960s in Australia, as much as 85% of Australia's wine production was fortified. But here at Miller it was different because my dad was making white table wines right back in those days and it was predominantly our production. And he had learnt some re really special tricks in terms of uh, pre-draining white wines, draining the juice off, getting fresh fine juice away from the skins and he combined this with refrigeration. But there was no commercial refrigeration in those days so we had to go to Wangaratta and buy ice blocks, bring the blocks back and put it in a big um, draining tank and uh, chill the uh, juice down and from that we got this lovely fine delicate Riesling that went on to win lots of gold medals back in the 60s and this was very different to the rest of the industry at that time. We have followed our forefathers in the production and creation of wine. From the finest grapes we make a product that is loaded in tasteful quality. My brother Roger studied vine grafting and vine development in California and he was able to bring those skills back to Milua uh, and really supported the fabulous growth that we achieved in the 1980s particularly our new vineyard developments at Mystic Park, uh, was um, understudied by Roger in bringing new vines to market. These grape varieties that he developed led us into new areas and new grape varieties that uh, were unique to Brown Brothers. <coughs> Amongst those was our relationship with Tarango. Tarango is a grape variety developed by the CSIRO that we championed and took uh, to market and really became one of our best known wine styles. It was different to the rest of the Australian red wines because it was light and fleshy, quite different from Shiraz and Cabernet. We have got where we are today because we have listened to the consumer. They have taken us to new places and we've tried new things and therefore we will keep on listening. When I was a young fellow in the 1940s and 50s we were very fortunate to have a, a population of Italian people in the area. They had immigrated to Australia to grow tobacco and uh, they, of course, when Italians want to have a glass of wine, they always have food with it and vice versa. And uh, they gravitated here to get their wine because at that time we were the only winery on the east side of the Hume Highway. And uh, it was convenient for them, who, the people who lived to the east of here, to come and get their wine here. Now, they liked the wines uh, rather differently, different from the uh, traditional wines that were sold in Australia then, mostly fortified. They liked the light table wine styles and they drank them young and fresh. So my father adapted his wine making practices to respond to that market and uh, it was very successful. It was a time after the Second World War when, when uh, uh, Australian consumers uh, were down in number because we lost a lot of our young people in the war uh, and those who remained uh, didn't have much money to spend. The economy was quite weak. So we're very grateful to these Italian people for keeping us uh, buoyant during those times. Our senses crave for new discoveries every day and Brown Brothers is able to entertain these on a level of sight, smell and taste in every single glass. When I'm asked about the future of Brown Brothers and where we might be going in the next 10 or 20 years, I do have to reflect on the past. And when we look at what's happened at Brown Brothers in the last 10 years, our success as being first to market with new and different grape varieties ahead of the market has been sensational. Amongst those, of course, has been the Zabibo range, and the Zabibos have really given us a new, fresh, exciting wine style that was quite new and quite different uh, for the Australian wine drinker. It's in this space of being first to market with new grape varieties and new flavours where I believe our future is. Vermentino in white wine, of course, is a new and fresh, zesty white wine that ripens perfectly in a warm climate. This is a grape variety that reflects climate change and reflects the future. The decision to buy property in Tasmania is also a, a direction for the future and I believe this will prove to be extraordinarily exciting as we see Tamar Ridge, Devil's Corner and Piri become really very successful uh, both in the domestic and export markets. One other grape variety that I've got enormous excitement about is Prosecco. Prosecco is a grape variety that, uh, uh, again, we've championed, we've led the industry and this wine style is now growing right across Australia and to some of our export markets like Asia and New Zealand. It's a grape variety that is, uh, brings a whole new spectrum of flavour and experience to sparkling wine drinking. 
It's in this area of being first to market, being leaders and being different to our competitors where I think we'll continue to succeed in the future. John Charles Brown made this wine in 1962 and is acknowledged as the first Botrytis Riesling in Australia, which went on to be served at the Arts Centre for its opening in, in 1964. But um, this was called Late Harvest, which was later to be known as Noble Riesling, and we developed that word noble to be associated with the noble rot and Botrytis wines. Another first for Australia. My dad championed Shiraz, Mondeuse and Cabernet right back in the 1960s and this was an influence of De Costello, the viticulture of Victoria in the 1900s who um, really recommended this grape variety and my dad learnt that fermenting Shiraz, Mondeuse and Cabernet together gave a wine of great complexity and great ageing character and still today it's one of our champion keeping and cellaring wines that's so important to our wine styles. We are different. We produce wines you know the Shiraz, Chardonnay and Cabernet and we make these very, very well. We also make wines that you have not yet heard of or you may not be able to pronounce but we are going to teach you. In the 1970s we took Brown Brothers wines to the United Kingdom. At that stage there was no quality image of Australian wine in the United Kingdom so we championed fine wine, fine varietal wine from Australia into the UK market. Off the back of that we saw enormous growth through the 70s and 80s and 90s as Australian wine became the most important imported wine into the United Kingdom. Our leadership in that role has been acknowledged as our growth in new varietal wines has continued to see us grow and take new wine styles to the United Kingdom. Off the back of the United Kingdom market we also developed markets in the USA and into New Zealand and gave us a really solid base of export outside of our domestic market. Wine is a joyous product to be enjoyed in social occasions, celebrations and with great food. Our product brings people together, creates conversation and aims to win a smile. We are in this business because we love what we do. After a lengthy period of not being allowed to import vines into Australia, the Department of Agriculture uh, changed the quarantine restrictions and uh, a great selection of new varieties came into the country. Uh, they were grown in the first instance at Merbein near Mildura and uh, when they were released to the industry we were given the first opportunity in Victoria to commercialise those new varieties. We planted them at Mystic Park, some of them were hot climate varieties, others were cold climate varieties, but we needed to plant them somewhere that was in a phylloxera free area uh, so that we could get some production from them as quickly as possible and work out which varieties were going to be suited for a commercial need. In those early days we were making our small lot wines in one gallon jars and uh, every, some of the wines looked really good and we scaled up the production in the vineyard and then through the winery and uh, marketed small commercial lots. But not every lot turned out the way we expected. It seemed that the one gallon jars weren't actually able to be replicated in commercial volumes. So that caused us to look at other ways of doing it and the kindergarten resulted from that activity. We have a kindergarten and this is our place of experimentation. Our children are named Sienna, Vermentino and Montepulciano. They began their lives here and others will follow and hopefully mature like them. The kindergarten is a really important innovation itself to allow innovation to go on into the future of our wines. In this facility we can trial different grape growing techniques, different wine making techniques and tailor wines up to the way our customers would like them. So we see this as being the, the platform for us to develop new wines and new innovative products for years to come. Mistakes and disasters will not and have not stopped us. We actually see these as opportunities. Planning ahead also enables us to deal with every single challenge. From our humble beginnings as a family farm, our family continues to toil our vineyard sites to enable the generations of the future to taste the fruits of our labours. My mother Patricia was a really great home cook. She seemed to have the capacity to take basic raw materials and get more flavour and taste out of that food than anybody I know. It was her love of wine and food that led us to producing Australia's first wine and food book. Back in the 1980s we bought wine and food together under the one cover. Previously there were wine books and food books, but this was Australia's first wine and food book that talked about flavours and taste. It was from here that we went on to develop 
the Epicurean Centre, we were able to take wine and food and bring it together here every day on the property. Again, there's been restaurants at wineries, but this was the first time that wine was actually the focus and people came here to see a wine and food matching, perfectly done with each dish every day. Brown Brothers is not a corporate beast. We are fit, slim and agile and we are ready to pounce on what comes towards us next. It is our people who make us great, those that have been here for the 40 years, seven months, or even two days. These people are all equally important. Like the vines, we are here to nurture all those around us, to enable the best to come from each individual. We are made up of real people. We are not a production machine. Each bottle with our name on it stands for reliability, discovery and our family. We must keep evolving, but we will never forget what we stand for or ever leave behind our roots. We believe that if we aim to be leaders in this competitive industry, we will remain leaders, a lighthouse lighting the way towards the future.